Welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And this will be an arm day. And it's been a long time since I've done a superset with biceps and triceps. And it's actually, well, one of my favorite ways of training a body part. So I think I will be doing chest and back uh, as well later. Because it does burn a lot more energy and it is very beneficial for cutting. And as you know, I'm cutting right now for a competition. But anyway, we start out with the barbell curl and then we do the French press. Uh, you can see it in red right there. Whenever exercise I'm doing, it will be in, uh, in red right there. And the weight that I'm using at the start is pretty light because you need to warm up, especially for the elbows. But always go with a full range of motion, especially on the French press, because I want to work on the long head of the tricep, and that's what you work with that exercise. Now we're moving on to a slightly heavier weight, and I actually saw in one of the comments on my previous videos when I was training back and biceps that I wasn't doing full range of motion because I wasn't going all the way up. The reason for this, and I'm doing it differently here by the way, but the reasoning for this is because I tend to use my front delts when going up too much. But I gave it a try on this day and uh, yeah, it felt pretty good, but still I felt my delts working just a little bit. So, but I could do a little more weight than usual. So yeah, as you can see right here, the lung head needs to be improved, especially the thickness area of the triceps. But the more my arms get pumped, the more dramatic the change will be. And you will see very soon in this video that the change will be pretty big. But yeah, I'm showing you kind of a lot of sets right now because I want you to see my whole workout. And since I actually bought a tripod, I can now capture even my last set. So on some of the exercises, I will show you the very last set to actually show you how deep I go and how much I go to failure with uh, exercises. And uh, as you saw with the barbell curl, I kind of started to swing at the very end. Those are called controlled cheat curl so you you do use a little bit of delts but your biceps are still getting most of the load and i only recommend doing that when you're already an advanced lifter because then you know exactly how to perform them and with the french press i can go pretty heavy and i need to go pretty heavy for me to actually feel the tricep because then i notice the greatest stretch okay guys we're about to move to probably a heaviest set of this super set and yeah it's gonna be pretty heavy but i want these arms to be big so let's do it starting out with the girl ooh, 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 ooh. so yeah for me this is pretty heavy already you hear a lot of stories of guys curling like 50 60 kilos but for me this is heavy as you can see a strict form purely strict form is not possible anymore so i use controlled cheat curls but if you look at my biceps you can still see them fully stretching and fully contracting but the front delts are helping just a little bit at the upper portion of the movement but this is a way to go beyond failure this will be extremely heavy to do on your own but i'm gonna do it anyway so yeah, usually you do need a spotter for this exercise to actually hand you the weight from behind. But because I don't have a spotter, I had to do it on my own. And I actually, back a few years ago, I wasn't able to do this on my own because this was simply too heavy to even get over my head and it was impossible. But yeah, as you can see, I'm not really going to failure at the end here, but I seriously felt an enormous, satisfying pressure in the triceps, which is what I was looking for with this exercise. Okay guys, notice they're not starting out heavy. This will be the close grip preacher curl to target the outer head to make the peak up here. And uh, you don't need to go heavy on this because if you do, you cannot concentrate on the mind muscle connection and the con uh, contraction will not be as great as with a light weight. So let's do it. Close grip. Just like this. <clears throat> Make sure there's always tension. So sit up a little bit, causing the tension to exist. And then let's do it, man. Yeah. 
trust me this contraction I'm feeling right now feels like a hundred pounds because it's that strong and that is what I really mean with a strong mind muscle connection is that when you do your best a lightweight will feel incredibly heavy That's how you again this exercise but this time it will be a skull crusher a different angle working with triceps once more let's do it from the side you can actually see what's happening slowly on the negative to enhance the time and attention strengthening the tension that's what it's all about guys not go too heavy save the elbows control the weight and purely focus on the muscle focus on the muscle indeed i noticed when i go too fast on the skull crusher or even the french press i don't really feel the tricep involvement so if you guys feel the same if you find it difficult to actually feel the tricep stretch to feel it contract just go slower on the negative and you will feel the tension increase beyond your imagination and the increments in weight on this closed grip preacher curl are really small a lot of people i notice a lot of people going a lot heavier than me but for some reason their biceps don't really resemble mine and this is not to boast or anything but this is just to make you understand if you didn't already that going lightweight with an uh, intense mind muscle connection has a lot more benefits than going super heavy and just moving the weight from point A to point B because that's not what bodybuilding is about that's what powerlifting is about but we are bodybuilders so we have to train like bodybuilders and that's exactly what I'm doing with this one right here I can go heavier yes but the slow negative will prevent me from being able to go heavier while the muscle still feels an enormous weight it doesn't feel how heavy it is it just feels the pressure and the stress that's put on it and the stress on a slow negative compared to a fast negative is a lot higher so the muscle fibers will be under more stress will be damaged more and will cause more hypertrophy of the muscle cells which means muscle growth all right, and this is the last set. This is truly the maximum weight that I can do with this technique of mind muscle connection. You can see clearly why in a few reps, really starting to struggle and really going to failure with this. And this is one of my favorite bicep exercises because as I said a lot of times, I don't have to go heavy, yet I feel my biceps are pulling a thousand pounds because that's seriously how it should feel like if you want your biceps to become massive. And that's exactly what I want. And that's the end of this superset with this last skull crusher exercise. Superset number three of this entire exercise combination. So now I'm not going slow in the negative, but I'm wrapping out the weight. This way I'll be able to go a little heavier, but my muscles are pretty much fatigued from the previous sets. And this is really to cause an enormous pump in the triceps, which will be beneficial for the next exercise. Okay, it's time for the third superset. Starting out with the biceps and then the triceps. Two ropes right here. You'll see what I'm about to do, but I'm going to work the medialis. Brachialis, I mean, right here. With the first exercise... The rope curl. So as I mentioned, I'm working the brachialis and I'm going to explain a little bit more about that later. But you want to work that if you want wider biceps from the front view, which is what I desperately need to be fully proportionate. That's what bodybuilding is about, being proportionate from all sides, being balanced. And that's what I'm striving for. And that's what I like to do every day in the gym, to sculpt my physique, to be the perfect physique this perfect sculpture that i want it to be and it's all in your own power this is my shape right now pretty pleased with how it's going the mass is uh trying to come at all the right places and that's what i like to see so let's keep it up Let's do the next set. Super set. 
right now. And what I love most about superset days, especially on arm day, is the incredible pump you get in your arms. You cannot, I repeat, you can N O T get the same pump by only training triceps or only training tri uh, biceps after chest or after back, for example. You need a full pump right at the start of the workout from the first to the last rep for maximum growth. Why? Because it has been proven in science, so this is not bro science, that if you get a pump and it is as long, if you hold it as long as possible, you will actually promote muscle growth. Yeah, buddy. Okay. I'm wearing the arm day shirt, by the way, and this happens to be my arm under a very nice beneficial angle. You do it like this, kinda. Same. Yeah. Available at vintagegenetics.com. And thanks a lot for everyone who already bought a shirt. It's going quite well, the sales. Because, you know, it's an easy and simple idea. And it says exactly what you will do and what you focus on today. It's arm day, so we will focus on the arms. So, next superset right now. But yeah, what I was saying about the maximum pump is that it actually promotes muscle growth. Why? Well, just think about creatine too. Creatine has been proven to increase water absorption and water weight inside the muscle, which causes a chronic or permanent increase in muscle size when you're sensitive to this creatine effect. And when this happens, that's when extra muscle protein synthesis occurs it is an extra effect of this pump and that's what you maximize when you're doing a pump workout like this is that you right now you promote the right environments for muscle protein synthesis by the way guys with this exercise the rope one going up you work i don't know if you can see the muscle in between the biceps and the triceps the brachialis is actually part of the biceps. Not lean enough right now, but you can kind of, you can see the light right here. And right where this bump is caused, that's the brachialis. And how you train it is by doing hammer curls. And what it causes is a thickness of your bicep from the front to become wider. So if you have a great look from the side, but like me from the front, it's a lot less, it's because you need to work more on hammer curls. If you look at uh, Ronnie Coleman and Arnold and stuff, who got great biceps, they always have thick biceps from the front also. And guess what they did? A lot of hammer curls. So I will be doing that as well after this, another one to work on the bicep thickness. Let's do it. The benefit of doing this on the very same pulley, the very same machine without actually having to walk, is that the time in between exercises is very fast. That's why you can see that the pump is getting a lot greater right now, because every time you do the biceps, which I'm doing right now, my triceps are stretching out. And when I'm doing the triceps right here, if you look at my biceps, they are stretching out. This constant contracting and stretching of both muscles causes even more blood to rush through these fibers and to cause an even bigger effect for later muscle protein synthesis. So after you eat today, the environments created by this pump will actually promote an extra muscle protein synthesis effect. All right, next are some good old hammer curls, again, to work the thickness of the biceps. So let's do it. Don't go too heavy, by the way, because that's no use regardless. Let's do it. And what I mean by don't go too heavy, especially on this one, is that injuries are happening quite quickly when doing this exercise. I've had one in my left arm and it took me literally months to overcome this injury. Not because it kept hurting, because after about a month the pain was gone, but the mind muscle connection was less because I wasn't able to properly contract it for so long. And even after that, it was like the nerve was damaged or something. And now it's fully returned, but trust me, you don't want to experience that as a bodybuilder. So watch out with the weight because the forearm 
tendon and the bicep tendon are very sensitive to if you use too heavy weights to actually get strained and hurt and injured so you don't want that to happen always properly warm up and the second part of this superset after these hammer curls pumping on the biceps it's time to stretch out the triceps and of course rush in more blood into those fibers if you look closely you see that i'm not going all the way up because what would happen if i go all the way up i would lock out and the pressure would be on my elbow and not on this tricep And for the ones wondering why eh, there's no one in the gym, it's because I'm alone in the gym after closing hours. I was fortunately allowed to train here, which is uh, very beneficial because when you're doing a competition, you kind of want to do every single exercise that is most beneficial to your physique and to your workout. So I'm now able to do it, work at my own pace and don't really mind anybody else. Of course, for most of the days I train when it's opening hours, but sometimes it's very nice to train on your own and be fully concentrated. Mm -hmm. Now here's a view from behind and you can even more clearly see that I'm not going all the way up. If you look at the tricep it's kind of hard to see but you can see the stretch and the contraction when I'm going up but if I would go up even more I could contract it myself but the pressure and the stress on the tricep would not be caused by the weight but just by myself. And then it is time for some good old classic concentration curls one of Arnold's favorite exercises and one of mine as well because this creates an enormous peak on the biceps when done consistently and I really like to finish a lot of my bicep routines with this exercise because you can really go to failure on this one and you don't have to go heavy you can go with a full contraction because sometimes at the end of the workout it is still difficult to feel the actual muscle that you're working but this exercise when done properly you can still feel that good peak contraction which simply tells you hey now i'm contracting the muscle to its maximum ability and when it's contracting to its maximum ability that's when you know you're in a good way to building some quality 3d muscle and i gotta say it's been a while since i filmed myself doing concentration curls like this and sometimes you are not really aware of your own gains but when you take pictures of yourself when you video yourself in the gym you really should do that if you think you're not making gains because looking back at this and comparing it to the previous i have to say i'm not disappointed okay well doing the last exercise of a superset like arms i like to do two separate exercises so i want to fully focus on the bicep and one on the tricep and this way you can really get the maximum effect out of both muscle groups because sometimes when you do a superset you might not be able to actually go all out on every muscle group i mean every uh, bicep or tricep movement sometimes the last set you go to the failure with triceps or biceps has still something left in the tank so first i like to do a bicep exercise in this example and then a tricep exercise in doing both to the maximum so let's move on to the triceps this is an exercise that I haven't honestly done a whole lot lately. It's actually been months. I think I did this exercise last when I was in the other gym I used to film at. So this is a great way to finish off the triceps, but because I haven't been doing superset exercises lately, I just haven't been doing this exercise for some reason. But I want to do it a lot more often. It's basically a triset, which means three exercises back to back of the same muscle group. And so I first start out with a close grip bench press variation, then I do some kind of skull crusher variation, and right after the skull crusher I do the most difficult variation, which is the French press. So you actually move under the bar, which you can see right here, and every single rep is a struggle to do, and all of a sudden you hit failure, and that's when you know that you did a good job working those triceps today. And here you can see it from a slightly different angle and the main components of the triceps that I'm working here is the medial head and the long head. If you look closely at my triceps you can see that the small head is barely 
contracting and the long head and medial head are doing most of the work especially with the close grip bench press variation you really work the medial head with this one you work mostly the long head but also the medial head and with the one i'm doing after this you work mostly the long head so you really get most of the triceps covered and you will for sure get the failure if you did your best on all of the other tricep exercises and trust me this variation is the most difficult because it puts the most stress on your triceps and it's all with body weight so depending on how heavy you weigh the more difficult it is okay guys last exercise of today the side delts these right here of course they can never be big enough so let's work them right now don't go too heavy i've got seven kilos right here so let's get it started a lot of volume guys and it might be annoying for me to keep saying don't go too heavy because hey we all want to be a hardcore bodybuilder right going heavy and a lot of volume like ronnie coleman for example yes i do like to do this on chest day i like to go heavy but combine it with volume with a lighter weight so we get both the benefit of progressive overload and the pump that's created by the high volume and what i want to do right now because i'm working a small muscle group and i want to really work only that muscle group and not the traps is using a lighter weight with more volume this way i pump up the muscle that i want to work really make it swell up with fresh blood to make it grow without actually targeting other muscle groups that help along with the side delts Okay, so as a last set, what I like to do is actually individual arms, so unilateral. And that means that you can focus more on one side and then the other. And you can also work on weaknesses. So start out with your weakest side and then finish with your strongest, matching the reps. Because when you do two heavy dumbbells side level raise, you might use your traps more. Because you really want to force the weight up. But we're going to use purely the side delts we want to create striation in there and fullness so let's do it so yeah this last set emphasizes what i just said if you use a heavier dumbbell which 12 kilos is really not that heavy but if you do it correctly and you really contract and stretch the side delts the way they should then it will become a heavy weight because as you can see i'm really going to fill you right here i'm not trying to cheat i'm really going to fill you with the side delts themselves and this is proven to me to be successful because when i'm lean the side delts are one of my fullest body parts even though i'm only doing one or two exercises a week but when i'm doing them i'm doing a lot of volume to make sure i hit them properly all right guys that was the workout with biceps triceps and side delts a very nice workout took about an hour to complete and uh, yeah i did it alone so you can do it too even without a partner just make sure not to do too many heavy free weights especially with the skull crushers and stuff because you simply won't be able to do the weight so that's why i like to do slow negatives to lower the weight but up the difficulty anyway i want to thank you guys for watching check out the new gear on vintagegenics.com thank you a lot for your support and i'm going home so i'm just leaving the gym right now and uh after workout since i'm cutting for a competition i didn't take a protein shake but i took actually some bcas only the essential bcas to promote muscle growth and um, promote it actually being anti-catabolic and uh, after this I will have an actual meal so normally I would have a protein shake right after training but now I just have the BCAs as less calories yet the muscle preserving properties are still in there so you know you want to cut calories anywhere you can all right so Today's a low day. I'm doing carb cycling now since this week. Uh, as you saw, if you follow me a little bit, I was 16 weeks out uh, about four weeks ago. So now I'm about 12 weeks out. 
tomorrow I'm 12 weeks out exactly. And in the first few weeks, it didn't really go that fast. You know, we were just testing out to see how many calories can I maximally eat um, <clears throat> without gaining weight, because we, you know, without gaining fat, I should say, because I did gain a little bit of weight, but it was purely um, muscle gains in terms of filling the muscle back up to about 120 kilos, 121. And from that point, and I was 14 weeks out, we started to cut down again because you don't want to cut down from already a kind of a depleted state. You really want to cut down from your full state so that you can really see the actual changes from your best physique to how it's gonna be. And right now I'm 12 weeks out and we just started carb cycling and I already noticed that the progress is really starting to show. We're getting a lot more uh, dry, conditioned, of course I'm not anywhere near I need to be, but that will happen eventually because I trust the process. And surprisingly I stay uh, pretty full as well, even though I'm cutting weight, I'm below my uh, maintenance calories, so I'm in a caloric deficit. I'm also doing cardio in the morning, five times a week for 60 minutes. Just uh, steady state, slow paced cardio, but still my heart rate is in between 120 and 130, so that's optimal for uh, fat burning. And uh, that's really what I do right now to lose this weight, and I'm finally starting to see my abs form. Because for me, I'm one of those guys, like you got, you got some of those guys who are at 20% body fat, and you can still see their abs which is like, you can be jealous of that, but at the same time, those guys may not be as driven to get down that low, because they're like, well, whatever, I can see my abs already, so why should I bother going even lower? For me, it's the absolute opposite. My arms and even my uh, quads, my back even, they stay relatively lean compared to my stomach area. I am the typical guy who gets love handles fed across the stomach if I go too far. And my last bulk, I uh, went up to 127 kilograms and uh, I just wanted to try it out for once. It still was a lean bulk, but I still gained a lot more fat than I usually did. So I went above a fat percentage that I ever in my life went. I was very strong, I was able to do, for example, 190 kilos on the bench press and uh, 10 times 170 was pretty smooth, but that also uh, was risky because when you're that strong, you're more easily inclined to do that heavy weights all the time and as I said today, you really don't want to use too many heavy weights if you don't have to. because. If you do, you only risk injury. And I did feel it in my shoulder a little bit and in the uh, tendon of the chest, so I immediately stopped going that heavy. And I'm uh, moderately heavy right now. Still doing 10 times 150, something like that, but going a lot heavier than that is really no use for muscle building. So yes, I was a lot fatter than I wanted to be, so my starting point was pretty much, you know, high in terms of fat. So what I did was maintain uh, my, cal my, my calories, my caloric intake. And with that, uh, that I mean from bulk to maintenance. So that's one step. And then I went from maintenance to cutting. And that's another step. And that's where I am right now. I'm about uh, two to three weeks in with the real cutting. And uh, I'm gonna show you my low day today. A couple of meals to show you what uh, low carb cycling is all about. So anyway guys, see you when I get home. Okay guys, I'm in the kitchen right now, just got home and uh, making my meal after the gym. I had my breakfast in the morning and now I'm going to have meal two of the day. So let's check it out. Okay, so basically I still had some leftover shrimp, which is about 300 grams in there. Uh, I don't know, in between 300 and 350. What I added is five grams of coconut oil a tiny bit of soy sauce for taste, low calorie, and some Cajun spices. 
And here I upped the vegetables of this meal, and I'll tell you why in a second. This also has 5 grams of coconut oil and a little bit of keju, and right here is pre-weighed uh, rice. You know, I choose about 160, 150 grams after the meal, I mean after uh, the workout, because even on a low day, you want the carbs to be revolved around the workout. For the rest of the day, this will be a lot less, you will see soon. But yeah, as soon as this is done, I will add the rice, and as soon as this is done, I will add this to this complete package, and then it will be a feast of a meal, even though on a low day. So let's see what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so now that everything has been added, let's put it to the plate, on the plate, and let's enjoy it. Alright guys, I'm cooling down from the workout while enjoying this meal. And the reason why I added a little bit more vegetables is because, of course, the volume has been decreased by decreasing the rice. So I'll add even more vegetables when the meal contains even less rice, probably only half of what it contains now. So that's to enjoy the meal a little bit more and a little bit longer to satiate your appetite. And uh, there's a good amount of uh, protein in here. A fair amount of carbs and a good amount of vegetables to fuel me after the workout and in about two hours I'll have my second meal which will be quite different so stay tuned for that for now let's enjoy this meal and let's edit a video all right guys it's about two hours later now time for the next meal and you can already hear it I'm preparing it but it's different than the last one so let's take a look Alright, so first I am poaching three of these white fishes, Pangasius. They're both, I mean, all three of them are about 100 grams each, plus or minus. Doesn't really matter, as long as it's about 300 grams of white fish, slowly poaching it. Here we got about 250 grams of Thai vegetables. And here we got 70 grams of brown rice, which we will then add to this. And as you notice, this 70 grams is less than half of what I had after the workout, so that's what it means to have a low carb day. My low carb day is about 250 mm -hmm. or 200 grams, on my high carb day or my regular carb day is about 450. So yeah, that is the difference to boost metabolism. And yeah, let's make this meal into one substance creation. Alrighty guys, I'm back upstairs and as you can see, most of this meal is white fish, protein, 10 grams of coconut oil, that's the fats, and then we got 70 grams of cooked brown rice, Uncle Ben's actually, which is a very nice brand of rice, and 250 grams of vegetables, so I poached this fish in a little bit of soy sauce with salt to make it actually taste pretty good, and if you don't poach it for too long, it will actually not dry out and stay very soft and moist, so I hope I achieved that, probably did, because the heat was very low but anyway I'm going to enjoy this meal right this second alright guys that was the video of today a lot more is coming I want to thank you for watching and don't forget to stay good